Hi folks, this is Karim Rauf from IT Visualizer channel. We will continue our lab, the Red Alert Lab. This is the video number 95. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. Just a minute, guys. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been now working for five videos uh, in discussing a documentation called CIS Critical Security Controls, which is a documentation for uh, protecting against cyber security attacks this was issued and published by center for internet security organization uh, which is a non-profitable -prof organization which uh, issues a lot of uh, re uh, security recommendations concerning a lot of products uh, maybe uh, operating systems and applications okay so for example it issued uh, security recommendations uh, on how to secure Windows 11, Windows 10, Linux products, uh, securing uh, firewalls, securing Cisco switches. So there is a lot of recommendations uh, for a lot of products and operating systems. And this is one of the documentations issued by this organization for how to protect yourself against cyber security attacks. And we have been now discussing this documentation for five videos. We have reached the point or the third recommendation uh, which discuss the data protection okay uh, the two previous uh, recommendations was uh, to have an inventory of all of your hardware assets and all of your software assets so the previous two recommendations was to have an inventory of your hardware and your software and this is from a security perspective is very very important this is not uh, only to uh, have uh, a list of all of your hardware and software but this is uh, is related to a security issue please refer to my previous videos for more details so we have stopped uh, for a couple of videos discussing the data protection which is the third recommendation the data protection is a very very critical issue uh, for how to protect yourself against cyber attacks so most of the cyber attacks are concerned about reaching the data and breaching the data and stealing the data so we need to protect our data very very uh, carefully and very very secure so how we can do this we need to know first of all how is the data created or what is the data life cycle so we can protect it from the beginning until the end of the data life so there is a beginning for the data life and the end and there is an end for the data life just like the humans it has a beginning and it has an end so we need to, to study the life cycle of the data so we know how we can secure it in all its phases so the data life cycle begins by collecting the data okay and then we have to store the data and then we have to use the data and then we can share the data between all of our partners or, or our co-workers and at the end we need to archive it for a certain amount of time or retain it for a certain amount of time and at the end we need to destroy it but in a very secure manner okay so no one can uh, uh, get advantage or use the my personal data or my company data to his advantage or to harm the company okay or to affect the performance of the company okay so these are the five phases for the data life cycle okay we need to secure the data in all of these phases when you are collecting the data we need to secure it when we store the data we need to secure it when we use the data we need to use it uh, in a very secure manner when we share the data we need to share it in a very secure manner when we destroy the data we need to it in a secure manner for example like shredding or have a shredder machine to shred the papers if this is one of the ways to uh, dispose or destroy the data in a secure manner and also when you are archiving the data we need to put it in a safe place so we can see that we can secure the data in all of its phases so in the previous video we have stopped at the third phase of the data life cycle which is how to use the data and secure it at the same time today we will discuss the fourth phase of the data cycle which is sharing the data so you have collected the data you have stored the data you have used the data for your advantage to uh, use the data to 
enhance your product or your service and to fulfill the user's business need for a service or for a product now we need uh, to share the data sometimes we share the data so we can uh, have or to enhance our products more or share the data between our partners so we can enhance the overall performance of our company or to have new business uh, opportunities we can share data with our partners so this will be for our benefit we can share data to enhance our products and the products of our partners or to uh, have more business opportunities and there is a lot of things actually from sharing data uh, sharing data also between not your company and your partners but to share it with sometimes the government sometimes the governments need to have uh, some data or this is a regulatory thing to uh, share your financial data with the for example the uh, uh, the tax uh, uh, tax uh, department for example this is something so you need to share the data sometimes sharing the data is to uh, for your own benefit or sometimes to collect or for for the government to collect for example taxes from you so you need to share data to these uh, uh, these kind of uh, people S and you need to secure it when you share it you need to make very sure that this data is shared in a very secure manner so today we will discuss the concept of sharing the data how we can share the data in a very secure manner how to make protocols and something called data share agreements we need when you are working with partners there need to be have a deal or to have an agreement or uh, 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 something or steps or rules or, or, or procedures to secure sharing the data what type of data you need uh, is shared between you and your partners this should be written in uh, uh, a document or a protocol or an agreement let's see now or go to the fo the fourth phase of data cycle which is sharing data let's go there so let's go here you go and actually you can share data not only through uh, we will see how we can the methods of sharing data we will discuss it when we come to it so first of all sharing data is uh, divided into five parts develop a purpose for data sharing so you need to know what is the purpose for data sharing establish a data sharing agreement so this agreement will uh, list what kinds of data to be shared and for what purpose and uh, uh, for what purpose and uh, how we can secure this data sharing okay access or assess data for sharing you need to uh, assess what data to be shared not all of that as uh, all of your data can be shared to your partners okay and understand ways to share data and at the end when you are sharing personal data you need also to take uh, uh, more uh, uh, to be more cautious when you are sharing uh, personal data so he's saying here data sharing at the social service sector because this documentation is for the social service sector in Singapore uh, he's saying that uh, sharing data in this short social sector between uh, social agencies this can enhance the service provided to uh, the the customers or the users okay because it's in the social sector so uh, social agencies when they share data with between each other this will enhance uh, the services provided as a whole by all of these agencies to their uh, participants for example uh, good food good health care good shelter something like this so he's saying that uh, data sharing in the social service sector is at nascent stage or it's, it's in in uh, in the beginning this what by mean nascent agencies are only beginning to recognize and explore the value of the exchanging and leverage on each other's data to increase operational efficiency so they share data to increase the overall operational efficiency of their agencies and uh, social uh, service sector as a whole and improve service provisions and also this will help them to provision the services provided so for example maybe one user or one participant is taking a service from a, a social service agent and he is taking another service or he is lying and taking another service from another social uh, sector agents or another social service agents for example maybe he's saying that i i don't have money 
uh, to for example to uh, to to have a shelter for example or i don't i need money to have a shelter and he is lying to one agent and the, at the other he's saying that i have a shelter but i don't have food for example so the agencies need to know or to share data so this uh, participant will not uh, record himself twice in in two different agencies with two different needs okay so we need to share the data okay to increase the operational efficiency and improve service provision data sharing can help to reduce data silos here is saying that sharing data will reduce uh, 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 the, the number of data silos here silo means like uh, a saver or data saving I don't know what actually what he mean by reduce data saving he means that you not need to save a lot of data because the data is shared between uh, different agencies so they have like a copy of your data what what you permit of course to be sent to these uh, agencies so saying that to reduce data silos improve service intelligence so this is something like maybe uh, machine learning so if you, you all participant or all the agencies share their data between each other and uh, uh, put it on computer on a large computer for example maybe the ministry of social service all of this data are uh, uh, collected or it will be redirected to the ministry of social service this maybe help to develop uh, a good service by uh, 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 by uh, by by what by uh, making the machine learning uh, use this data and predict the future need for services and products so maybe this is what you're talking about and enable data driven decision making okay so this is uh, in brief data sharing will help you as uh, or help not maybe the social service sector not only the social service sector but other sectors if uh, the the companies or agencies in this sector are sharing data between each other some kind of data this will help to improve the overall performance of this sector okay maybe the industrial sector okay maybe the healthcare sector maybe the entertainment sector maybe any so any sector needs all of the participants in this sector need to share a certain amount of data between each other so they can enhance the overall performance and overall performance of the sector and to have more uh, 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 business uh, opportunities between them okay so he's saying a data sharing purpose provide multi faceted support to individuals and families he's saying this is for the social sector but we don't need to take it uh, as an e this is only an example but from what we know that this will uh, in general sharing data will enhance uh, the overall performance okay of the the agencies or companies in a certain sector here he is uh, directing or is pointing to the social service and the coordination between the diff different social service agencies will help them to improve their service anyway we all know that the develop of a, a purpose for data sharing very very simple to have more business opportunities between me and my partners okay and uh, to increase the operational efficiency of my agency improve service provisions okay so this is the, the first thing or the first step to develop a purpose for sharing data this is the first thing and then the second thing to establish a data sharing agreement we need to establish uh, should identify the relevant parties so i should identify or uh, specify which parties that I will share my data with so the following which parties involved should establish and sign a data sharing agreement so I need to identify what parties or what persons I will share my data with or what companies I will share my data with and then we have something called a data sharing agreement this data sharing agreement will include what or DSI D, DSA or data sharing agreement is required when data is shared outside your agency it should include document terms and conditions of data sharing agreed by the parties involved to avoid ambiguity in the data sharing process okay determines the parameters for the data permitted for sharing and help govern the data sharing partnership so this is very very clear and very very uh, straightforward so you need to make an agreement 
to identify what data to be shared okay and for what purpose or for what time maybe the data is shared for a certain amount of time so this is a data sharing agreement you need to identify the parties will be involved in data sharing okay and to put terms and conditions for this data sharing okay so here he is saying that giving you some recommendations when you are trying to put terms and conditions in data sharing for example roles and responsibilities of parties involved what is my role in this data sharing and what what i am responsible for so your partner is responsible for protecting this shared uh, data he should secure it and you should secure his data if you are uh, transferring data back and forward between you and him okay purpose for data sharing maybe it's for a business need maybe it's for uh, something for the government sometimes the tax uh, ta tax department need to ask some information about your activity or your financial activity so it can uh, uh, consider or it can calculate the tax percentage needed so this is something or this is something for the data sharing purpose the purpose of data sharing types of data to be shared maybe personal data program data types of data maybe personal data for example uh, between uh, partners to have more business opportunities to sell uh, for example more uh, products or to have future selling opportunities for example maybe you are sharing financial data to the government as we have said before okay then we need to consent provision for sharing of personal data for intended purpose so if you are sharing personal data to your partner your 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 customers personal data to your partner for a business need then he should uh, you should take approval before sharing this data okay and it should be for a certain purpose or intended purpose your partner should know it will be shared for uh, a certain amount of time not for all the time medium for sharing data and this is a very very critical thing when you are sharing that you are sharing it through mediums something like emails something like websites something like uh, api okay we will talk about api later so you need also to know the medium to be shared all of this should be included in the data sharing agreement so in the data sharing agreement you need to identify purpose of sharing of data responsibilities of sharing of data roles of sharing of data between the parties types of data to be shared a provision or a, co a consent or approval from the the customers to share the personal data medium what is the medium to be used for us for ex uh, for sharing data process and uh, process to facilitate access and correction request to personal data if you are sharing personal data and you need to correct some of these data then there is there is uh, an easy way to access your uh, or your partner should have an, uh, an easy way to access these data and correct it and vice versa for you of course but only to be permitted on under your so uh, under your supervision frequently of data sharing it, it, this should be online sharing through emails maybe uh, uh, ad hoc maybe between a vpn maybe this is something i think he mean by ad hoc uh, one off exercise routine process so this could be a routine process online process all the time or should be i don't think it's a vpn or office side anyway frequency of data sharing maybe it will be uh, the time frame that uh, this data share agreement will last protocols for data handling constraints on data usage were applicable so data handling we can see the protocols for data handling that personal data should be secured uh, uh, some kinds of data have some constraints on it my our financial data if you are sharing financial data between our partners so this financial data should be only for our internal employees not to get out of the agency so there's some terms and conditions what should be included in the data sharing agreement so the first thing is to develop a purpose for data sharing then establish a data sharing agreement and this some uh, points that be should be included in the data sharing agreement then i think we need to assess uh, again i think here is saying that uh, also this related to uh, a data sharing agreement uh, if there is a company that you give your data to to uh, organize it or to to work on it then this also you should have an agreement with it so he's saying data and intremity management life cycle a data intermediary refers to an external organization that is processing data on your behalf okay 
your agency should ensure that you will have all necessary understanding when managing data in dreams your agency can refer to so and so so there is should be also the sharing agreement if you are working with a third party to uh, process your data anyway so i think we need to go to the third step for assess data for sharing okay your agency should assess the data that can be shared with other agencies and prepare them based on the following data sharing agreements so we need to make a data sharing agreement and then after that in data sharing agreement you will list what kind of data to be shared personal data protection we have discussed this before also remember to reference back to your agency protection policy so if you have data protection policy for example encryption of the data uh, something like this you need also to uh, make sure your data when it is traveling or it is one it's transferred to your partner it is protected okay maybe by using secure protocols or maybe using secure email whatsoever to prepare i think to pair and compile refine and anonymize data for sharing in accordance with data protection policy and ensure that the data can be used for the intended purposes say anonymize here that the data should not uh, identify persons it should be a general kind of data okay not especially if this is a personal data it should not refer to a person this data should be anonymized or to be anonymous okay so anyway assess data sharing you should assess the data to be shared based on the data sharing agreement which will list the kinds of uh, data to be shared you should assess this kind of data okay and list it in data sharing agreement personal data you should assess the personal data that will be shared to your partners and to protect the data anyway so assessing data for sharing this is a kind of just uh, identifying what kind of data to be shared and this i think this should be before establishing a data sharing agreement so you should put this step before you should assess the data then put it or establish a data sharing agreement anyway let's continue the fourth step is to understand ways to share data okay this is the very critical thing here and here your role as an IT will come to to secure the ways to share the data so first of all we can share the data by the common communication tool an email okay you should uh, send an email to your partners okay and this is widely used or you can uh, transfer them using uh, something called uh, sftp or secure file transfer protocol if you are using this kind of transfer or this tool for transferring you should if you are using ftp protocol to share data between your partners the ftp protocol should use sftp or secure file transfer protocol or you are using websites so you are providing data or your partner can get the data from your website okay can be used to disseminate information and provide service provide services okay and here he is providing some external links for how to secure your electronic data or secure your emails and some recommendations you can uh, read them from the documentation i have put in the google drive link so if you are using emails then we should secure our emails as a way of transferring of data and sharing of data then we should secure our websites and our web applications if you are using this kind of uh, uh, medium to share data to our <coughs> partners okay so this is two ways i think a third way is to use applications <coughs> something like if you have an application or you have an application in your uh, network and your partner have another application his network then sharing data will be done between applications okay so this you should you can use something called api i think maybe we need to have a look about what is an api and then he's saying that you should uh, you can use three kinds of api to share data between applications so he's saying here that api uh, or uh, application programming interfaces Okay, so this is the uh, uh, this is the abbreviation APIs or application programming interfaces. This is small uh, kind of software. Let's consider this to help applications share data between each other. So this is what you mean by application programming interfaces. So you can use three kinds of APIs. Okay, uh, open source API or government API or build your own API. These are three kinds of APIs 
to share data between applications so for an example let me get this example maybe you have a financial system in your uh, network and you need to share the financial data to your partner's financial system okay on the other side so the two financial systems will share and communicate data to each other using apis okay so of course you should secure this api and by the way i think it's secure it's away secured but this is one way so you can share data between applications or share data using emails or share data using websites but let me see what is an api what is a p i api uh, let's go further api uh, okay lots of api integration let's see this one or api application api i think uh, in programming so he's saying here what is API what is a simple explanation it is a software in Tremory that allows two applications to talk to each other very very simple so it will allow two different programs to talk to each other even I think if they are not compatible to talk to each other okay so this is an interim software that will ease the communication between two different softwares okay so this is very very uh, known uh, way to let two softwares communicate uh, even from different platforms I think or from different companies maybe or even these two companies doesn't uh, have the same uh, language or same programming language written uh, by uh, by their softwares okay so anyway so this is in brief how we can uh, or what is an api so we can understand ways to share data we have said it is through emails through websites through application programming interfaces the last thing is the sharing of data okay we have said this or repeated this consent obligation you should take the approval of the user for sharing data purpose limitation it should be shared for a limited purpose and in time a limited purpose and limited time notification you should inform the user okay that you are sharing the data this is something uh, protection you are obliged to protect the data or you should protect the shared data and should your partner should also protect your customers uh, shared data okay and we can see here that even through transfer for person that this should be also uh, protected so this is in brief okay the five steps for sharing data should first you should develop a purpose for sharing data which is of course to enhance operational efficiency and improve service provision and to have more business uh, future uh, opportunities to first i think we can attempt to assess data for sharing this is the second thing assess the data that will be shared and then make an agreement about this uh, data that you will share agreement about each one responsibility for sharing the data the roles uh, the security of data transferred between uh, different partners anyway and a lot of things and we have discussed what should be listed in the data sharing agreement ways to share data we have discussed with the three ways to share data and at the end when you are sharing personal data you should take more uh, consideration or to focus on uh, a lot of things uh, approval of the user protection of the data accuracy of the data uh, transferring of data shared should be it should be transfer should be sh uh, secure during transfer or sharing uh, it should be shared for a limited amount of time uh, it should be protected a lot of things we have discussed this uh, more than once because it is uh, repeated in every step in the way personal data protection is repeated in all of the five phases so I hope this video in front of you all the upcoming video will discuss the last phase which is archiving and retaining of data and then destroying of the data thank you so much have a nice day